Okay, we'd like to welcome Steven Yeager into the interview room, our 2024 champion of the Texas Children's Houston Open. Steven, a PGA Tour winner, how does it feel? Uh, it feels amazing. Um, I couldn't have thought, dreamed up a better, uh, better week to do it. Um, obviously, we were playing Scotty last couple of days. He's been, he's been on a tear. So um, to kind of slay the dragon a little bit this week was was amazing. And um, he's such a good dude, such a good player. I, I was just happy to play with him a couple of days. Move up to number 11 in the FedEx Cup, and so many avenues now open up for you the rest of this season. If we can get your comments on how this changes your uh, your goals going forward. Yeah, you know it. it the goals remain the same in a sense, you know, like my goal has been playing as well as I can uh, the entire year and um, it, it, it changes a couple of tournaments that I get in easier um, and um, I'm excited for that. I'm excited to to kind of get on that next level and, and, and compete in majors and do all that kind of stuff. That's 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 been my goal for, for a few years now. So. Um, like I said, super excited, obviously, this week to get it done and, um, yeah, have a great rest of the year. And you mentioned uh, missing or uh, uh, beating Scotty today, but there was a whole host of players who could have won. Just talk a little bit about the atmosphere out there with so many players with a chance to win. You know, I, I didn't really leaderboard watch a lot today. Um, I knew that um, Toasty was playing good in front of us. I don't know what, how he, he – I must have bogeyed or something on the, on, on the end. Um, I knew that – that Scott hitting that close on, on 18, I think then I looked at the leaderboard on 18 and, and, and figured, hey, you know, I make this, this is game over. Um, hit a great putt, just kind of left that a little right, and uh, yeah, ended up winning the tournament, which was awesome. Okay, we'll open it up to questions. If we have a microphone, we'll uh, pass that around. Okay, yep, we'll start right here with Dale. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, what uh, what was going through your mind when uh, Scotty was lining up his last putt? Were you just assuming you were going into a playoff? Yeah, I mean, 100%. I, I, I expected him to make it, um, and I'm not mad at him for missing it. <laughs> uh, you know, you had five of you were tied through 54 holes. He's the only one that had won on the tour, but I guess this is proof that that's why you actually got to pick up the clubs and go play. <laughs> it's, you know, it, it, it's such a great feeling, obviously, and um, I'm super excited to get it done. And it, it you know, it, it, I couldn't have dreamt a better way to finishing and uh, beating the number one player in the world. And, um, you know, the guy's really good, and uh, I, I, I'm, I'm super happy to get it done this week. You know, but just if you look at your scorecard, it would look like you were playing defense on the back nine. And, and but you know no pars no uh, I mean no birdies no bogeys, uh, but was that actually the case or is that just the way it happened? You know this golf course just it, it, it kind of gets a little bit in your head on the back nine. There's a lot of trouble on 15, 16, 17, and um, you know I really didn't hit in, in many bad shots. I left you know one in the heart on 12, um, great par on 13. Um, I felt like I kind of got stuck behind a tree on 14, and and and, and you know I, I felt like I was hitting good shots, hitting good putts. Um, they just weren't dropping. Um, you know, if you don't hit a, you don't hit the fairway in 16, you're going to lay up anyways. It's a pretty easy hole if you hit the fairway. So um, I didn't feel like I was playing defense at all. Uh, I just, you know, it, it just, it's this game is very hard. Uh, it's hard to win on the PGA Tour, and um, I'm super glad that I made it. Some guys, though, might have maybe taken some chances to try to ensure the win. I mean, I think you get points for having been very patient out there. Uh, that's the name of the game. Uh, well, coming in, I mean, you'd had, a, you'd had a nice run this year. You had a couple of T3s, and uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you, uh, didn't you didn't you lead the lead, lead, uh, tournament with an eagle on your final hole? So good stuff has been happening. It just hadn't coalesced, right? Barely understand him. Go ahead. Um, or did you Was that a question? Sorry, I didn't hear the question in there. Well, obviously, we're playing, we're playing pretty well this year. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a chance at Torrey. Um, obviously, in Mexico, it didn't feel like a chance. You know, those two guys were, were pretty ahead of me. Um, but I still had a great round on in Mexico to, to finish T3rd. And um, felt like my game's really been trending. I've been... Uh, again consistent I had a couple of weeks that it wasn't great in Florida um, 
but I, I felt like if I could just get putter uh, a little warmer, I could, I could have a chance. And um, the putter was nice this week, and I, um, I got, got the job done. All right, Kevin. Um, when you think of the week as a whole, is there any moment or anything that comes to mind that put you in a good frame of mind or was a good sign or a good vibe that you think helped push you forward to get to the spot where you are now? Yeah, honestly, the week off last week helped a lot. I was, you know, I felt like I was very mentally fatigued at the players. Um, you know, you play Honor Palmer, it's just, it kicks you in the head nonstop for 18 holes. Um, and I was obviously super happy to get in, but it's just, it's such a hard golf course. And um, the players, I didn't have my best stuff and missed the cut. So uh, to be able to, to have a week off um, and, and kind of recharge and, and actually, you know, I, honestly, I didn't touch my clubs until Sunday. So um, kind of reset a little bit and, and came out with a way better mindset this week. Um, and that's sometimes that's all you need. How does a week off look different for you now than it did earlier in your career before having a family? Yeah, yeah. We moved in a new house last week, so I actually didn't – literally my bag was in the travel cover until Sunday. I hit a couple of putts and hit a couple of shots on Sunday. And um, But, yes, with a family, I, I tried to make sure that um, if I've had a long run – to give some time uh, off golf, just not only for my family, also for me. This this is a very demanding sport mentally, so you have got to be fresh um, to be able to compete out here. The um, hole 17 off the tee. Does the extra distance and speed you have now did that help you on the way you approach that tee shot? Not if you had a really spinny healer uh, like I did today, um, but yes, I think. Um, there was a few times that that I, I had I had some speed on some drives and it helped me either get to a par five or hit shorter clubs in and um, you know 17 I think the cover is only 270 so um, unless you totally whiff one it, it, you'll cover um, but maybe a couple of years ago when I was carrying a 285 you actually have to hit a good one so um, yes I agree I, I could go at the green uh, straight up knowing I'm going to cover there for sure. Is there was there a moment? today in the round that you feel is a pivotal moment and then did you feel like you were playing were you keeping track of what Scotty was at particularly or not really at all no I mean I, I you know I try to stay within myself play my own game in a sense um yeah you if you play with a guy you know what he's doing right like we've played enough golf so um but I wanted to just do my best um and you know it like I said, I didn't make any birdies, but also didn't make any bogeys in the back nine, uh, which sometimes, you know, is enough, um, especially on a hard golf course. I mean, 12 under winning, that, that cons you consider that a hard golf course on the PGA Tour for sure. So um, to be able to do that was very rewarding. Um, but, you know, I don't think there's one moment I just, you know, you, you can't think ahead too much. Um, your mind's going to want to do that. It did it. Um, but, you know, kind of to pull it back a little bit and, and be like, hey, you know, you still got a whole job to do is, is big. Okay. Yep, let's go back here. Real quickly, so you moved into a new house just last week. Mm -hmm. And, well, that, that'll take your mind off golf. Boxes <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> okay. what, what are you thinking on 18 when, when Scotty's lining up for, for that putt? And, you, you know, what, what's your mental process, you know, going through there? Uh, where to hit it in the playoff on the green. Um, you know, it, I've always kind of been taught it, it, that was a match play situation at that point, right? So I missed my putt, and uh, you expect your opponent to make a chip or putt, whatever it is. Um, so that, that was my mindset, and, uh, you know, he's the best player in the world. Uh, you know, I think he was expecting to make it too. Uh, I got lucky that, did, that he didn't, um, and uh, but he'll be back. I'm not worried about him at all. And you know, p playing with pressure, the being pressure of being in that final group and coming out with the wind is, it, is that can be another can that be another you know springboard for you? It just kind of validates the the work I've been doing uh, on and off the golf course, and it validates all the you know hours that I spend on 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 perfecting the craft in a sense and um yeah you know I, I found that the best way to kind of you know reset after that is have some days off and, and and make sure like hey you know you're still you're still 
just me. You know, uh, you won the golf tournament, but you still got to go back to work. You got to, you know, do the right things and do the things that got you there for sure. And th- that that moment, uh, you know, getting to celebrate with your wife and your young, you know, son, put, you put him in the trophy and everything. What, what, what does that mean to you? You know, what, what's that moment? Yeah, you know, I... Those two, uh, they've been by my side ever since. Obviously, my son's 16 months old, so um, that was a life changer. But my wife's been on my side for, you know, a long time. Um, she's seen the worst, and she's seen me win on the Corn Ferry Tour. Um, she, you know, she's been by my side. She's been my biggest supporter, uh, biggest critic, too. You know, like, uh, she, she'll sit me straight if, if something's going on. So... Um, to be able to celebrate with them, uh, the two most important people in my life, and um, I'm super happy they were here. Um, and uh, to, to, you know, hopefully I'll do that again when my son remembers it. That's, I think, the, one of my goals in my life, to, to have him remember that dad was actually good at something before he's 14, 15 years old. I'm retired, and um, he's like, what did you do with your life? So, um, you know, that's kind of that's a long-term goal. Steven, you- Oh, I'm sorry. Once, go ahead. Yeah, we we started dating in 2015. Um, end of 2015, I had just finished a year on the Latin tour. Made about twelve thousand dollars that year. It was a great year. Um, and uh, like I said, she's seen everything. She's seen missed cuts after missed cuts, and she's seen some wins and um, seen great stuff. So um, I, I, I owe a lot of that stuff to her. Stephen, you mentioned the Corn Ferry Tour. How important was that tour, the experiences out there, to what happened today? Yeah, absolutely. You know, they, they, it's been a while since I won a tournament. You know, I think my last win out there was 2019. I think the Knoxville, no. 2021 that's what it was yeah um but you know it 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 prepares you in a sense of knowing what feelings are going to come up what uh you know there is going to be some challenges and things are going to go a little bit haywire um there's not a perfect round that you play on to the win on the pga tour or any tour um so i felt like it prepared me definitely uh to to get it done today okay kevin what was um, going through your mind at the end, just hugging your wife and son, and just what what kind of emotions and thoughts come through your mind in that moment? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I always say, you know, that golf term, winning golf tournaments is not going to make us happy, but it, it sure as hell feels really good. So, um, you know, that feeling we chase for a lot of times over our careers, and um, to be able to share that with with the most important people in your world is is, is amazing. And for, um, we've talked about it before, but could you give a quick kind of synopsis of how you got into the game and what brought you to golf as a kid in Germany? Yeah, uh, my family, that we lived pretty close to a golf course in Germany, um, maybe a mile or so. Um, I played all kinds of sports growing up, soccer, you know, the typical ger- German sports, soccer, hockey in the winter and all that kind of stuff. So um, golf kind of got in, I got in, I would say, decently late. I was probably nine or 10. Um, my parents always p- play golf on vacation. They, you know, they bring, my sister was a good golfer and she was a lot older than me. So I would just ride a golf cart when I, a golf cart when I was six, seven, eight years old. That was my favorite thing to do. Um, and eventually I was like, Hey, I want to try this. And, um, obviously went to the local club. They had a great junior program there. Um, and, uh, yeah, kind of, got better fast and people were like hey you know this kid's got some you know talent um and I loved being out there you know back then we didn't practice much it was more spending time and playing golf and um yeah that kind of started the love the love for golf and um ended up coming over when I was 16 to to the states and uh played obviously in a great high school golf team and um yeah stayed in Chattanooga ever there ever since you um you've talked in Shelby's alluded to you in the past you would take kind of your bad rounds home with you more and kind of let that seep in a little bit to your life off the course why why was it important to you to kind of change that it's hard uh still happens sometimes um that's that's a work in progress but uh you know golf is our life you know that's that's how we make our living um so to kind of put that in perspective you got to realize hey you know if 
we don't have golf, we're still going to be a happy family. Um, that, that was the biggest, um, you know, game changer in my life. I felt like with my son being born, um, it didn't matter if, if I was a professional golfer or if I was, you know, a carpenter. Um, he was still going to love me. I'm still going to love him. And um, to have that perspective really helped. And what um, from um, how your dad raised you, do you hope to kind of channel as a dad yourself? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I want him to be able to do whatever he wants to do, right? Um, I, I think um, the, the the option of not playing sports is not an option. Um, I think sports teach you so many things. Um, camaraderie, you know, obviously golf you play by yourself, but there's so many sports that you learn to, you know, learn so many social skills and um competitiveness and all that kind of stuff. I'm hope to instill that in him uh, at some point when he's, when he's older. And uh, uh, if, if he wants to play a professional sport, um, I, I'm, I'm going to try to guide him the right way, um, not be too involved, but also give him a helping hand sometimes when he needs to. And if he doesn't want to, that's great. Um, but I think sports are, are, are definitely a, a must for kids. I think they teach him so many things. And um, what would you like to say to your dad if you were able to say something to him? Right yeah, now? you know, it's funny because I have three ball markers in my bag that uh, my wife made me. One, my, my, my son Fritz is on the name with a four-leaf clover. One is my dog Phil. Um, and when I pulled it out, I always pull it out not knowing which one I pulled out. I pulled my dad's one out. It says Papa Klaus. So he obviously passed away a couple of years ago, uh, the week of the players. Um, and that was that was probably the low low part of my life. I was playing terrible golf. And um, the the silver lining in that story is my my son was um, conceived that week. We, that was kind of that, that, you know, you lose a life and you gain a life, right? And... Um, you know, he'd be rolling over right now, happy. And uh, But, yeah, we miss him, and uh, my mom's coming over next week, so we'll celebrate with her a little bit, and, uh, yeah, it'll be great. Was your dad's passing part of kind of the desire to change your kind of mental attitude overall? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think that that and the birth of my son, two, two of the things where I felt like, hey, you know what, this is, this is just golf. Um, it's so hard sometimes. It, we we want to make it way more than it is, but on the end of the day, you know, like I said, you still have a family to come back to. They still love you, um, and uh, you know, there's worse things in, in in golf than not winning a golf tournament or missing the cut. So, all right, anything else? Um, just all right. one. The ball marker. When did you pull out your dad's ball marker? This morning. I always pull them out before the round, and um, I, uh, that's whoever I pull out. Uh, that's the one I use for the day. Um, and it was my son the first three days, and was my dad today. And I, I just kind of smiled. And I, you know, when you kind of said earlier, what was a good omen for the day? That was my good omen for the day for sure. And um, the Masters, what's it going to mean to you to tee it up at Augusta National? I can't wait. Um, it's been obviously a dream of mine for a long time, and um, I've had plenty of opportunities to go play it, you know, obviously pre-Masters or, you know, during the year. Um, but I've, I've said I'm not going until I'm in the Masters. So um, we'll, uh, we'll see if I can make a trip beforehand and, and kind of see it before the craziness starts. And, uh, yeah, I'm super excited, obviously. All right, that concludes the English portion of the press conference. We're going to take a few that have been uh, 